Uh, so the first thing you ought to know is that I was born in Manchester. I was born at the old St. Mary's Hospital, which I think is now an NCP car park. Um, I was born there, and my father um, worked at Manchester University, where he spent his entire professional life. He was fortunate enough to have that sort of work in life. But my parents, having lived at the old Moberly Tower, which some of you may remember was this big student residence block that towered over Oxford Road, they then moved to the suburbs, they moved to Wilmslow, so that's the cross that I have to bear in life. I once met Mick Hucknall, the singer of Simply Red, and he said, are you from Manchester? And I said, well, kind of. And he said, how do you mean? I said, I'm from Wilmslow, and he goes, very kind of. <laughs> so there you go. But if you look at the map, as everyone here will know, Wilmslow is at the end of the, of the suburban sprawl in South Manchester, that's the last bit before the countryside, and... Um, I, you know, I had this sort of attachment to Manchester once I became independent enough to go there on my own. And, you know, I would regularly visit my dad at this end of Oxford Road and all of that. And then I was educated. I did my A-levels in Hume, not far from here, at Loreto Sixth Form College, between 86 and 88. And that's really when my acquaintance my, or my sort of involvement, I felt, in Manchester really uh, developed, you know. And Manchester then, this brings us on, I'm not just rabbiting on here, this brings us on to um, this question about, well, what changed? Because when I was 16, when I started at Loreto College, Hume and Moss Side were very different places. I mean, that was only five years after the riots of 1981. It was recent, very recent memory. And they were still very much defined by that. They were still outwardly, um, you know, they looked like the inner city neighborhoods that you would hear about on the news, you know, for good and ill. Um, and Loreto College was this place that, where people from all over Manchester, south and north, uh, would come. Uh, and some of the students there were from Human Moss Side, but I, I think at that time a, a minority were. So, you know, you were aware of going into this part of town. Anyway, um, if you got the bus in to Loreto College, you would walk past the legendary Crescents. Everyone here presumably knows what the Crescents were, right? And that remained sort of fixed in my mind as an image of what Manchester was. And in fact, if you, if you talk to Richard Lees about this, he will say that the sort of watershed, pivotal event in the history of modern Manchester was the demolition of the Crescents, which I think happened in 1991, uh, and, the re and the regeneration of Hume. Hume now is a very, very different place. As people here probably know, there was a big project called City Challenge back in the 90s, which sort of made Hume a very, very different place to live. I think even the street layout changed. I mean, when I was there, there was all sorts of stuff going on. I want to remember when Viraj Mendis, the, the refugee from Sri Lanka, I think he was, he was holed up in a, in a high Anglican church, not, if not far from where we were. And there was all graffiti everywhere saying, free Viraj Mendis. And the Crescents were full of hippies and punk rockers. And they'd, um, they'd made their own club in these, the, the Crescents used to be, council flats, and according to legend, I don't know whether this is true, you could live there for nothing. Once they moved the families out, because they were essentially structurally unsound, you could live there for nothing. And they, um, they created their own nightclub called The Kitchen, and they knocked through the walls of two flats and made a cinema and all this. So there was all this stuff going on. And Manchester itself was full of cheap property, I suppose. And, and if you were a sort of bohemian or left-wing sort of person, there were lots of spaces you could kind of seize and do things with. You know, you could run a left-wing bookshop. This is what it felt like, or a little record shop, or some vintage clothes business. Affleck had started in 1982. But the place was still sort of palpably sort of shabby around the edges. You know, Tony Wilson used to say it was like a bit of post-industrial Britain someone had chewed up and spat out again. It was a dirty old town, you know. And you could still sense that. Anyway, to cut a long story short... I now come back with my kids for city breaks, what you'd call it, which I, I, that would have been unheard of, the idea that anyone would do that, right? And we stay in the Premier Inn on Portland Street because my son is obsessed with Premier Inns. And, um, you know, and over the summer we went to Mackie Mare's and that's street food and drank craft beer and Northern Quarter. I know this makes me sound like an appalling wanker, but um, <laughs> that is, that's amazing to me, you know. I used to run around the, what they now call the Northern Quarter on a Friday night, drunk, and, and jump on piles of cardboard boxes, because that's all there was to do. Do you know what I mean? So 
It's miraculous, but we'll go on to talk about this stuff. I feel very ambivalent about it because there are all sorts of tensions and problems, you know, about whose city this is. I'm talking about the city centre. Whose city this is? Who's it for? What's it all about, you know? Is it even sustainable to think about this economy that just seems very often to me to run on drink and food and clothes? Do you know what I mean? So I'm simultaneously amazed by what's happened here but also sort of concerned in some way, and it makes me think lots of sort of awkward thoughts. Now, that's Richard Lee saying, shut <laughs> your mouth. Um, you're from Middleton, aren't you? I am, yeah. So we're probably gonna talk about the north-south Manchester divide. So you're, yeah. I mean, uh, people get very uncomfortable with this, but you're already from the other side of the Mancunian tracks in that sense, yeah. aren't you? I mean, yeah, I'm a lot bit younger than you, so I don't remember sort of <laughs> that side of human Moss Side. I just remember when I was growing up, like Moss Side had this reputation. It was somewhere you wouldn't go. It wasn't safe. Um, Moss Side, I remember as a case study in GCSE geography, um, but I'd never actually <laughs> been there despite being from Manchester because it was just this really dangerous place. <laughs> and now I'm buying a house and I can't afford to live there. Like, you know, it's got <laughs> this complete huge turnaround. And yeah, the city centre, I mean, I... I I uh, was born in North Manchester General Hospital, grew up in Middleton, spent several years in London sort of doing my time in the industry, which is what you have to do. And then, you know, was very fortunate to get a national newspaper job up here and, and have managed to move back. Um, but just in those years that I was away, I noticed so much change in the city centre. Like, I did come back to visit, but, you know, living here, you spend a lot more time there. And, you know, the northern quarter for me, um, I remember we used to go out in town, so in central Manchester, and then we used to go to Sankey Soaps, if anyone yeah, remembers yeah. Sankey's, and you, we used to get a taxi out there, and it would feel like forever to go out to Anchor, so it felt like, you know, it was probably only about 15 minutes, but it felt like you are in this taxi forever, and you were going past warehouses, factories, nothing, and now, there's no break, it's all just a continuation from the centre of town right up to Anchor, and I noticed... Um, Estate agents now are advertising flats in the Northern Quarter as lower Anco, so that's, you know, whereas I'm sure sort of a decade ago, Anco would have been sort of upper Northern Quarter, no one was living there at all. But yeah, these bits of, you know, these bits of town, there was nothing there, just everything's so, everything's so residential. And every time I come into town, which is a lot more frequently now that I live here, you know, there's just buildings springing up all the time. They seem to put them up so quickly. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, the, the, the city centre seems to get more and more residential. Another thing that I've noticed is, you know, when I was... I didn't go to university in Manchester, but I had friends who did, and it used to be sort of Fallowfield, Rush Home. That was a student area. Now all the students live in town. Um, so just the city yeah, centre yeah. is becoming more and more residential. But, you know, I do wonder particularly sort of post-pandemic when people value their outside space more. And, you know, I've reported a lot on um, issues with cladding and things like that, which maybe we'll get into later. So I do wonder if all these flats are ever going to be lived in. But, yeah, going back to the north-south thing, yeah, I grew up in Middleton. Um, and that just feels a whole world away from the city centre. Like, you know, there isn't... I can't walk to a restaurant but I can't, now even now even now mean. i can't walk to there's no restaurant i can walk to i have to get in the car there's sort of you know a couple of pubs but they're not very nice you couldn't get a nice glass of wine there so it just feels like worlds away um from even the city center which is what about do you, six miles do you see away. any signs of of the prosperity i mean that's an understatement of the of the city center <laughs> rippling out to middleton i mean it must have I mean, changed in some ways, because presumably a lot of people who live in Middleton come into the city centre every day to work. Yeah, right they do. Um, so it, it seems to be quite a different demographic that live there. Like, you do get a lot of young families, but they're sort of, I don't know, they're, they're not sort of, it seems to be people that value having a nice house and a nice garden and spending time at home with their kids, I'd, I'd, rather than, you know, there doesn't seem to be a, a huge demand for restaurants and theatre and things like that. You haven't got any like hipsters. That. You haven't got any hipsters. You haven't got any hipsters. You haven't got Rejoice. So it is, it's changing slightly. So, like, now there's a nice sort of cafe at the end of the road that's open four days a week. The, there's... Um, there's a deli open at the top shops that really you need to take out some sort of 
loan for to be able to buy anything from because it sells very sort of high-end expensive stuff but um you know I, I just wonder how long it's going to last you know it's you know it, I've it just what you think that the, the first sort of stirrings yeah of I don't know to call it gentrification but of that yeah, sort of thing arriving are yeah. very fragile yeah because we're on the verge of hard times again now they yeah, might just as easily so recede you know, it's the type of place where you know you can buy a jar of olives for six pounds yeah, and if you yeah. want to do a weekly shop there you need a second mortgage and yeah, yeah. I just it, it's nice to see it there and I, I mean we can have arguments about whether gentrification is a good thing or a bad thing but I think Middleton is in need of it um but I just don't know if it'll last and I'm actually moving to Levenshume in the coming weeks and that just feels completely different yeah well, yeah six pound jars of olives yeah. into the distance yeah. and you know I, what i really missed from london was that i could walk and get something nice to eat and something nice to drink and not have to get on a bus not have to get in the car and that was what i wanted from manchester and i just couldn't get that and you know in north manchester you can maybe get it in presswich or in whitefield yeah you put you can you can get it in presswich or in whitefield places like that but you know where i'm from sort of where i went to school Middleton, Rochdale, Oldham, you, you'd struggle a lot more. And I think there really is. It doesn't get talked about in the same way. And I know in London there's sort of a north-south London divide, but I don't think that's as pronounced anymore as it once was, or it is in Manchester. Yeah. You've got places like Peckham, um, that you know are really hipster and you know I used to live in Deptford and again when I lived in Deptford there were no restaurants, there was nothing, and now you know you can't move for Hips yeah, yeah, the bike yeah. shops and flat white. So, yeah, still think in Manchester that's very pronounced. I mean, so another thing we should talk about, because that's, I mean, that's really what, what you've just described, is that sort of gap, particularly as far as North Manchester is concerned. And the gap arrives pretty quickly. So during the, the Brexit referendum, the, camp, the Brexit referendum campaign 2016, we... Um, I make a video series called Anywhere But Westminster, which some of you may see. You're nodding. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Just been to Grimsby. <laughs> four days. Um, nice hotel. Stay at the Holiday Inn Express, if, but don't expect to get an evening meal after 8 o'clock in Grimsby. It's <laughs> not going to happen. But Middleton, by contrast, will look like Las Vegas compared to <laughs> Grimsby, let me tell you. But um, Anyway, so we travelled up. We started in Merthyr Tidville and sort of came up through the Midlands, and we arrived in Manchester. And... Um, we went to a careers fair at the university, the Manchester University, that one of the two. And everybody there, you can imagine, apart from one person who was like Jacob Rees-Mogg, they were all voting Remain, right? And, and we said, what do you think of people who vote Leave? And they said, well, they're all racists and all that, you know? And then we got in the car and we drove however long you have to drive at Rochdale Road to go to Collyhurst, right? Where I'd reported, I'd done reporting there before. Which is quite a striking place. It has those urban splash flats yeah. with the names of, of, of the Panker sisters yeah. on top of them. God knows why. Why have you done that? Do you know what I mean? Um, it's just a block of flats. Um, and we walked around Collierhurst. I didn't meet anyone who lived in those urban splash flats. And they were all voting leave. Every last person we met in Collierhurst was voting leave. And um, there was a pair of women we met who were in the film we, we, we put out. One of, the, one of the most revealing instantly you, as a sort of orientation politically this is what we're dealing with and this was at a time when everyone thought Remain was going to win these two women said uh, we said how are you voting in this referendum and before I'd even finished the question we said how are you out like that right and, um, and I said well they're all voting in in town and this woman said to me of course they are they've got that and she made the money gesture and she said people who've got money vote in and people who haven't vote out, right? And that's only you can walk to Collyhurst from the centre of Manchester. We're in a completely different cultural world, you know. 